What's going on guys? So today I'm coming at you with another fitness related video and today I'm going to talk about the proper form for the sit up during the Army APFT, some of the different variations you can do to actually help improve your sit ups, um, as well as things that you shouldn't do for the sit ups or things that are going to get you terminated to where you're going to have to either fail that event or have to start over. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to give you guys a few little exercises and tips on improving your sit-ups. First things first, some of the video clips that you guys are gonna see are something that I recorded the other day with my little brother. I had to help him uh, basically to hold my feet and everything just to show you guys like the whole proper form on holding your feet and just the entire scope of things. And I'm gonna try and overlay those video clips of over this video just to help you guys out. But the first thing I wanna cover is the biggest thing for the sit-ups, which is when you're performing the sit-up, you're going to have to have the base of your neck over the base of your spine, and you guys should be seeing that right now. But basically, during a lot of people's sit-ups, right, they may not go up all the way, and the, the key point for it being a complete sit-up is for the base of your neck to be past the base of your spine so you should be able to see that pretty well and i also want to show you guys a a little variation so my little brother he is in the air force rtc in high school air, air force jrtc in high school and apparently in the air force they do sit-ups with their arms crossed like this and they go up to where their elbows touch uh their knees and so that's their kind of sit-up and you guys should see that and then the army's way of doing sit-ups you actually go all the way up and then all the way back down so that's really key for this like you don't want to not go all the way up because that sit up is not going to count when you are doing the the sit up basically the position of when all the way down is considered all the way down is just your shoulder blades so when you're doing the sit up you go up all the way where the base of your neck goes past the base of your spine and then whenever you go down only the bottom of your shoulder blades have to hit the ground so for me and as well as my little brother, our bodies have a big curve in our spine. So now that you know what qualifies as going up all the way, which is base of your neck over or past the base of your spine, going down all the way is going to be considered when your shoulder blades hit the ground. So when you're doing your sit-ups, you don't want to, you know, have your shoulder blades kind of curved up a little bit. For me and my brother, our spines are curved to a point where it's kind of difficult for us to not do this anyways as you guys will see for me whenever i go all the way down i don't actually hit the ground until my spine hits the ground but for other people if you kind of have a, a more of a curved back or a straight back you're not going to have this issue like i do so for me sit-ups are definitely a lot more difficult because i don't get this luxury of being able to do the shoulder blades hitting the ground but i hope i did demonstrate this pretty well for you guys where all you have to do is whenever you're going down the base of your, or not the base of your, the shoulder blades on your back are the only thing that has to hit the ground. You do not have to fully extend and let your top of your shoulders hit the ground. You do not have to do that. Only your shoulder blades. One of the other key factors that gets people on the sit-ups on the PT test is your hands, okay? So when you're doing the sit-ups, you have to have your hands behind your head and they also have to be interlocked, right? They do not have to be fully interlocked as you can see right here. Basically, your hands only have to be slightly interlocked, so just your fingertips. It does not have to be the entire hand or whatever, but if your hands do come separated apart, if you're sitting up and your hands get separated, then you're gonna be terminated for that event. So if you have gone over 10 sit-ups, then you're going to, if, if you've gone over 10 sit-ups and you haven't gotten to a point where you pass, then you're going to fail that event. If your hands come apart before those 10 sit-ups are reached, then you're just going to be terminated and I'm going to have to restart that event. As I said in the last video, related to the proper form for push-ups, you have until 10 push-ups or 10 sit-ups to do them properly. If you do not, they will stop you and then tell you what you're doing wrong and then you'll go back to the back of the line and you'll repeat the sit-ups again. Now something I wanna hit on real quick is the spotter. So whoever is going to be holding your feet, if you're practicing this at home before basic training or whatever and you want somebody to hold your feet, so you might as well be doing it the correct way. And the correct way to hold somebody's feet during the sit-ups is just using your hands. You can put them on the toes, you can put them on the ankles or whatever, but you can only use your hands. You cannot use your knees 
to brace the person's feet. So you can't put all that extra body weight on there to actually brace the person. So that's another thing that again, apparently the Air Force or the allows you to do is you can put your knees on your feet. So I asked my brother initially, I was like, hey, hold my feet. And his first instinct was to hold my ankles and then put his knees on top of my toes so that his whole body weight could be on me. Uh, that is not allowed in the army. You cannot do that. You can only use your hands to brace the person's uh, ankles and to hold them down. Uh, so you can just you know, be on your knees when you're doing that. Or whenever I'm trying to do somebody, I try to give them the best advantage possible and I'm capable of doing this. So I will generally be in the plank position. So all, as much as my weight as I can can be on that person's uh, hands and feet, especially towards the end of the sips when somebody starts incorporating a little bit more of their legs. So that's what I like to do. But again, you can only use your hands. You cannot use your feet or anything else. Your knees cannot go past your hands to brace the person's feet. So two more things for the proper form for a sit up. Number one, your feet have to be within a foot apart. So they cannot be spread farther than a foot in distance between themselves. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing is your knees. Whenever your knees are bent, they have to stay at a, around about a 90 degree angle. You could bring your, your butt a little bit closer to, to your feet to make that a smaller angle, but I don't recommend that because that's gonna make the sit up a little bit harder. And that's also why this is a rule because if somebody's holding your feet and your legs start to get farther and farther apart so your butt starts to scoot farther backwards, it's going to make the sit up a little bit easier. It's going to start working different muscles that aren't fatigued. So that's something to keep in mind that you can get terminated on so that can cut off your sit ups uh, whenever your legs start to get really far apart. However, there is a little bit of leeway. Like as soon as you break that 90 degree angle, they're not going to be like, oh, you're terminated. But if it does get to a really drastic point, uh, they probably will they probably will cut you off so keep that in mind when you are doing your sit-ups and finally one of the last things I'm going to cover before I go into the rest positions and then some of the exercises you can improve basically when you're doing the sit-ups during the PT test your butt cannot be raised up off of the ground that that happens to a lot of people sometimes whenever they're struggling real bad they will lean back and then they'll raise their hips up to try and thrust themselves forward you cannot do that that is another a uh, little thing that's going to get you terminated. So if you lift your butt up off of the ground, then you will be terminated. And now the proper resting position for the sit-ups, there's really only one resting position. The other one that I'm going to mention isn't necessarily a resting position because you're not resting, but the, the real resting position for the sit-ups is in the up position. You cannot use your arms to rest on your knees, your hands, or your arms cannot touch your knees. So when you're in the upright position on the sit-up, you want to just be sitting there as, as far up as you can because that's going to bring a little bit less uh, strain on your core because technically you're still using your core to stay in the upright position. But again, you cannot use your elbows to rest on your knees. That is going to get you terminated and that's going to finish your sit-ups right there. The other thing is in the down position, right? So one of the things that you can do whenever you're really exhausted uh, is you cannot rest at the bottom, okay? So you can't just go down and lay at the bottom of the sit up and just rest there. You have to continuously try. So basically what you can do is kind of do just like tiny little crunches where it seems like you're trying, but you're not really putting all of your effort into it. So if you're really, really struggling on the PT test for the sit ups, you can kind of, you know, just do a little crunch just a little bit, a few times, give your abs just a little bit of a rest and then go for it again. Now, for a few variations for the sit-ups and how you can kind of do a few different things to maybe get the most out of your sit-ups, number one, the thing that a lot of people do is they just keep their, their arms really tight up against their face. They're, they're just really tight and they do sit-ups like that. For me, generally, I do this at the very beginning of my sit-ups just because I'm going as fast as possible. And for me, this is a little bit quicker. The other thing that people can do and the thing that I do once I get a little bit more fatigued is once I get down to the bottom, I slap my arms down. So I will slap my arms down to the ground and then thrust them forward to get a little bit more momentum going up. So whenever I'm going down, my elbows will go back. And then once I'm going up, I will try and throw my elbows forward just to get a little bit more momentum going up. Because when I don't know if you guys have ever done like a two minutes of sit-ups or so before, but for me, usually the last 30 seconds is whenever it starts to get more difficult and I will start incorporating, 
you know, as much momentum into it as I can, you know, within the rules and regulations, like you don't lift your butt and do all that stuff. So that's a few variations that I like to do. Some people do the arm flap thing every single time and it works for them. You need to kind of figure out what works for you best. So for some people keeping their arms together, uh, might keep their core super tight and you kind of want to relax your core every now and then when you're doing your sit-ups so that they're not just like in a constant flex mode which will make them fatigue much faster. Two more really common variations of the sit-up is number one, sitting up and going in between your legs. I see this all the time for people. It usually happens whenever you start to get really fatigued and it all it really does is it kind of changes the muscles that you're using to go and do your sit-up. So a lot of people that will kind of spread their knees a little bit and go in between their legs. So their, the elbows, their elbows and their body and chest will kind of go in between their legs with their knees spread out beside them. Uh, this is something that I don't do because for me, I guess the way my body's worked and my fatigueness, I don't ever get to that point where I want to change that up. So that's something that you guys can keep in mind. If you are struggling, try doing that and if it works for you then you should probably keep that in mind whenever you're starting to get to that point when you're struggling. The other thing that people will do, which is use their obliques whenever they're doing the sit-up. So they'll do a little rotating motion. And basically what this is doing is this is incorporating some of your oblique muscles, which you aren't, which is like the abs on your sides. And those things, those muscles aren't gonna be worked as, as much whenever you're doing the sit-ups because you're doing a straight up and down motion. So whenever you twist your body, you're incorporating those obliques, which are muscles that aren't as fatigued as your regular, just straight on the front uh, core abs. So that'll help out a lot of people. Again, this is something that I don't really use that much, but if I did get really fatigued, I know that this would definitely help me. And the last thing I wanna cover in this video is a few tips on exercises that you can use to help improve your sit-ups. So for me, I was really bad at sit-ups whenever I first started, or whenever I first joined the Army, because I had a really strong core, I have a really strong core, but sit-ups, in my opinion, are not really that great of a test of your core strength. I've said that before, but I really don't believe that. Like, you're using your legs, and sometimes some people use their legs a whole lot more than others. Uh, it just so happens that, like, your body, your body type has a huge factor in that. So for me, the way my body is, is I have to go all the way down uh, to actually, you know, go down to the ground. I can't actually do some of these like half, you know, half, uh, halfway down sips that some people could do just because their body is built a certain way. So for me, I really sucked at it at first, but a few of the exercises that I've used to go from not maxing the sit-ups to actually maxing the sit-ups every single time I go to the PT test now without an issue is a few of these exercises. Some of them are incorporated from the P90X Ab Ripper X exercises because you need to work your lower abs, you need to work your, your hip flexors, and then you need to also work your upper abs. So doing some crunches and variations like that. I'm not gonna go into too much detail or really much detail at all on these, on these exercises, like you know reps and sets and whatnot, because a lot of you guys, you're all just in different, you know, you're, you're in different phases of your fitness level right now. So for me to say, you know, do, you know, four sets of 25 of this exercise, a lot of you might not even be able to do 10 reps of that exercise. So I'm not going to say that, but these are just some exercises that I like to do to help me improve my sit-ups. Now, something that you might notice, right? Some of the things I'm going to be working my lower abs, and if I'm doing the bicycles, and if I'm doing any of that stuff, basically that's gonna work my lower abs and a little bit of my hip flexors, because when people are doing their sit-ups, you're gonna be working your legs a little bit, and sometimes whenever you are doing your sit-ups and you're getting totally fatigued, your legs are actually going to feel tired. Your hip flexors are gonna feel tired right at your hip, and the ab exercise, or the, so the sit-up event and the PT test, is before the running event in the PT test. So you don't want your legs and your hip flexors to be really tired or else once you start running, you're gonna feel a little bit tight. So that's something that I like to incorporate as well as doing some of the upper upper core and doing crunches and stuff like that or crunch variations. I'm not doing mild crunches to where I'm just barely you know moving forward. What I like to do is actually try to lift my upper body off the ground when I'm doing any exercise that is helping me prep for the sips, 
because when you're doing sit-ups, you're gonna lift your entire body off the ground. So if I'm doing crunches, if I'm doing any kind of crunch variation with my knees in the air or whatever, I wanna actually try my best to lift as much as my upper body off of the ground as possible, and that seems to help me out a lot, and I hope it can help you guys out as well. So obviously my next fitness related video is gonna be related to the run, so we're gonna make that video here soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you wanna stick around for that, as well as some of my other army related videos. And if you like this video, hit that like button, that would be awesome. Comment any questions, fitness related, non-fitness related, whatever related, leave your comments down below. If you don't follow me on Instagram or Snapchat, links are in the description, and I will see you guys later. Drop.